turn into the National Museum of the United States Navy. I'm David Barker, an educator here at the museum. We're joined today by Captain White and Stuart Milk to talk about the USNS Harvey Milk, the ship's importance to the Navy, and what the name means to the people of the United States along with the crew. Captain White has worked for the Department of the Navy for 36 years, three on active duty, 33, military, 33 years as a military sea lift command civilian mariner. He is a graduate of the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, Naval War College, and holds unlimited tonnage ship master's license during his career. He has been assigned to 20 different ships and has commanded eight of them. He has participated in numerous contingency operations, and he has deployed in support of the Navy in the Caribbean, Northern Europe, the Baltic, Mediterranean, the Red Sea, the Horn of Africa, the Persian Gulf, the Indian Ocean, the Far East, the Pacific, and the Atlantic. He is presently assembling the crew for the future USNS Harvey Milk, and is looking forward to the ship's delivery to the Navy in June of this year. Stuart Milk, who is also joining us, is a global LGBTQ rights advocate, has worked on the ground supporting struggling emerging LGBTQ communities in over 60 nations, on six continents. As the nephew of Harvey Milk and the founder of the Milk Foundation, Stuart has expanded his uncle's example, visibility and courage, successfully leading a historic campaign and events in collaboration with the UN, Munich Security Conference, U.S. State Department, the EU, the U.S. DOD, and the White House. A feature commentator on the broadcast television, Stuart has also provided several historic media firsts, advocating for LGBTQ rights on broadcast TV around the world from Italy to Chile, Hungary to Vietnam and Australia. He has proven he has provided master lectures on the state of global LGBTQ rights in the world's leading universities, including Harvard in the US, Cambridge in the UK, Tamast University in Thailand, Trinity College in Ireland, and the University of Peron Peruna, just to name a few. He most recently addressed the UN Security Council advocating for the global criminalization of LGBT people and the keynote speaker of the DOD Pride celebration be held at the Pentagon Ground Zero. Stuart is a recipient of dozens of prestigious global human rights awards and honors. Stuart has worked alongside some of the most renowned world leaders of our time. However, he is most honored to continue to organize honored to continue organizations with hundreds of human rights advocates working in some of the darkest corners of our planet, for which he described as our everyday heroes and our main ingredient behind our equality and advanced today. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. And I will start with Stuart and ask the simple question. So I'm Cam White, obviously, I guess. <laughs> you look like your picture. Good. All right. Great. <laughs> and then let's get into the discussion of the USNS Harvey Milk. So, gentlemen, we'll start with probably the easiest question there is. Well, many already know what the explanation of how U.S. ships are named USS. This ship is slightly different because it's named USNS. Now, we'll get into the Harvey Milk part of that soon. But what does USNS actually mean? Uh United States naval ship. So it is uh, USS is United States ship. So a USS ship is a commissioned warship and a USNS ship is a government owned naval auxiliary that is not a commissioned warship, but works very closely with the Navy. We enjoy some of the same protections that the Navy has for sovereign immunity. And we are, would be expected to accompany the Navy into a war zone, but we are a civ civilian manned naval auxiliary. How are ships chosen names brought forward? And I, I find this one pretty fascinating, especially knowing the background of Harvey Milk. Could you guys expand on that? I, I'm not going to talk in general on how ships are named, but um, one, the, 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 the trajectory for the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk was really um, from the Navy Secretary. Uh, the Navy Secretary has the uh, privilege and honor to name ships, does not need um, congressional approval or even exe further executive branch approval. There was a, and the Navy doesn't like campaigns for 
ship naming. But there was a, a, a coordinated campaign to have uh, a, a U.S. Navy ship named after uh, my uncle. And that campaign included many, many cities from around the states, including San Francisco and San Diego amongst and Salt Lake City, really a very eclectic group of cities that put forth resolutions asking the Navy to name a ship after um, Harvey. And um, uh, at that time, uh, during the Obama administration, Secretary Mabus had um, already put into works a John Lewis class of ships um, that would be named after social change tra trailblazers. Um, so the first ship, of course, is the John Lewis in that class. And it's, um, so some people say Euler, I like to use the official name, which is Sea Lift Command Vessel. <laughs> is that right, uh, Captain? Is that is that a correct uh, Sea Lift right. Command, Marine Sea Lift Command, something like that? Well, um, yeah. Currently work for military seal of command. Yeah, military seal of command ship, but we are an military oil seal of command ship, and um, and so uh, the first ship um, uh, that was built. Um, uh, well, let me tell you a little bit about the about the naming ceremony. So to this day, the Navy Secretary's office said that they have never had as much press coverage of a naming ceremony than they did for the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk. And that includes a naming ceremony for a commissioned ship or a non-commissioned ship. And we held it on Treasure Island. Um, uh, and uh, we had um, really just global coverage. Everyone from, from uh, the uh, Australian News Service, the BBC, we had um, the China News Service, we had um, uh, just a tremendous amount of positive coverage. There was some pushback um, uh, from, you know, from some extreme elements of, of the U.S., uh, one element of the U.S. civil society community, but for the most part it was very, very positive. Um, the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk is the first uh, military or non-military vessel named after an LGBTQ um, uh, activist and person. And also it's the first ever military or civilian ship that the U.S. Navy has ever named after someone who had a dishonorable or less than honorable discharge, which my uncle did have. Yeah, um, he was a commissioned officer. He was um, he, uh, Lieutenant JG at the end, correct? Um, he was a um, commissioned officer. He was stationed. He was on. He served on the Kitty Hawk. He also um, served as a naval diving instructor. Um, he they his DD two fourteen is is quite lengthy. Um, I had the DD-214 and for years I had been telling people, because my uncle had said um, somewhere in his political career. So uh, he, um, he, he would tell people that he was, that he served and that he was honorably discharged. And um, actually s someone at the San Francisco library found a, a forged honorable discharge. But of course, I knew he was dishonorably discharged or less than honorably discharged, and I knew why. I didn't have the details. Secretary Mabus actually got me the 20 pages of details that he was found in a park where people were known to, where LG, where gay people were known to frequent, and there start two weeks of questioning, um, interrogation. It was really, if you read over some of the documents, quite brutal. Um, and um, and eventually they they got him to agree to to resign with a less than honorable discharge. Um, and so uh, I think it's an important element. You know, one one story that I do like to tell is that Secretary Mabus before. So uh, under the Obama administration, anyone who was who had been discharged um, either dishonorably, less than honorably, because they were found out to be gay or lesbian or bisexual, um, they were, um, the, the Obama administration allowed either they, those individuals or their family members to get their discharge reversed. 
So to have a dishonorable discharge changed to honorable, a less than honorable discharge changed to honorable. So Secretary Mabus gave me a call a, a, a few days before the naming ceremony and said, Stuart, you know, we really would like you. We can't do it. It has to be a family member. Um, we'd like you to request uh, his uh, dishonorable, less than honorable discharge be changed to honorable. And we can expedite that and get that done probably in a day. And I told him, well, respectfully, I'm going to decline. I said, I would like this ship to be named after someone who uh, the ship will teach was forced out of the military because of who they are and who they loved. And I think that that's a great teaching moment. I said to the secretary that our taking down don't ask, don't tell, which was really a horrible law. And since this video is for Pride Month, people should know. Um, so the secretary had said um, uh, that, you know, that he could get this expedited. I explained to him um, that it's really important for us to realize that, you know, even great institutions like our U.S. Armed Services make mistakes. Um, civil rights advances, and this was this is a great teaching moment that we can teach that at one time someone like my uncle would have been forced to either would have been honor, dishonorably discharged or forced to resign. Um, and uh, don't ask, don't tell now allowed people to serve, which is tolerance. Um, but I think that that the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk says that it's that the military is more than tolerant they are celebrating now everyone who serves. And there's a difference between tolerance and the fully full acceptance and celebration. So um, I don't think the secretary enjoyed that conversation with me too much because I think he really felt that he should have his, uh, my uncle's um, left an honorable discharge changed to honorable. And that later that afternoon, I got a call from the White House, um, the switchboard, and uh, they said, uh, the president's on the phone for me. And um, I have talked to the president quite a few times at the White House. I've been able to, I was privileged enough to share, President Obama, to share events um, uh, with him at the White House, including a Harvey Milk Champion Change Medal, a global conference on LGBTQ rights, and of course, uh, my acceptance of my uncle's Presidential Medal of Freedom. Um, so the president said, similar to what Secretary Mabus said, is says, Stuart, I really think we should get your uncle's less than honorable discharge changed to honorable. And I explained to him the same thing that I explained to Secretary Mabus, except at the end of my explanation, all I heard was click. And um, and then I uh, I. Uh, reached out to to Valerie Jarrett, who is was the president's senior policy advisor, and she said, "No, you didn't get disconnected, Stuart. I, I don't think in my history anyone has quite said no to the president like that." And so he hung up on you. Um, anyway, that's a little interesting backstory of it. Um, I did see the president at an event after that, and and wanted to ask him about it, but I didn't. So um, so. Uh, I'm sorry now, uh, your original question that I, uh, <laughs> that I, as you can see, I'm, I'm very verbose, so. Uh... <laughs> Be because you're talking about the ship, that actually leads to the next question. Sure. Could you tell us what kind of ship this is and the type of personnel on the ship? Now, you've already said that it's a civilian ship, ran mostly by civilians for the Navy, but what exactly does it do? Okay, the ship is a John Lewis class replenishment oiler. It is the second ship in the class. The class of ships will eventually consist of uh, 20 ships, I've been told. So we're the first two are, first two are in the water almost running. The, the Lewis is running, we're almost running. Uh, our mission is to support Navy ships at sea uh, primarily by refueling them. The ship carries about 7 million gallons of uh, diesel fuel and uh, jet fuel, kind of split between whichever some sometimes it's half and half. Sometimes it's more the more diesel fuel than jet fuel. But uh, so maybe four million gallons of diesel, three million gallons of jet fuel. We have a very large capability to carry a frozen and refrigerated food, spare parts, mail, uh, stuff like that to support Navy ships to keep them at sea. Okay. Um, now I was actually looking into this earlier because not being a Navy person myself, I've never experienced it. 
but speaking to a number of them at work and looking at it online, it looks somewhat dangerous. I mean, you're having to match speed with another ship and you're transferring everything over. Is there anything specific in training outside of, you know, the military training that would experience something or show somebody this experience? Um, yeah, what you're referring to is the underwear replenishment operation, which we routinely do. The U.S. Navy is very good at it. We, we're good at it because we practice it a lot and do it a lot. It is definitely a perishable skill. Uh, for, for, for the Harvey, the ship to Harvey Milk, we will do underwear replenishment training with the crew. We'll have a practice on rep. Uh, we do it across the pier, actually. Two ships will tie up, so it's a static situation. We'll practice passing the rigs back and forth, and then we'll go to sea to do that in a practice mode with another supply ship. And then we'll, then we become qualified and then we can go out and re refuel Navy, all, all Navy ships that are capable of refueling at sea from the, you know, from the smallest one, this frigate or an LCS up to an aircraft carrier. So yeah, you're right. It does have a certain degree of uh, danger to it. The ships are 160 feet apart, running at 13 knots with uh, tensioned replenishment rigs, uh, kind of pulling the ships towards each other. So. You have to, you know, balance the steering to keep to keep the distance, and uh, but it certainly can be done. And luckily, the Navy and the military in a whole experiences many things like this to keep it better for the people. Um, now, Stuart, you actually had answered part of the next question, which was what was the driving motivation for the Harvey Milk, and could you go into detail? I I think you went into some great detail on that earlier. Uh, do you think that Harvey himself would be happy with the naming of this particular type of ship or with just a ship itself? And do you think that it's something that he would have been happy with? I'm sure the family is very happy with this. Um, well, like like any family, the, you know, I'm happy with it. Um, I can't speak for all the family members. Some some didn't even want um, a, uh, we have a few public schools named after Harvey and some didn't even want that. So, um, you know, it's, and and the same thing with the LGBT community. I mean, Harvey said it best. We, we represent every segment of society from the extreme left to the extreme right and everything in between. And we represent every political party. We represent every faith, um, every skin color, every ethnic background. Um, so, I can't tell you that there's unanimous, but I'm very pleased with it. And the Harvey Milk Foundation is, and most of the political leaders that I know, um, uh, the fact that he is in a this really amazing class of ships named after other really incredible individuals such as John Lewis, such as Sojourner Truth, such as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, such as the Robert F. Kennedy. I mean, you know, if you look at, I think Harvey would be thrilled to be in that grouping um, of, of people who have made substantial change for the betterment of our country. Um, and I do think that there is a tremendous um, educational component to this which um which was very very big for both secretary uh, mabus and secretary um del toro spoke to me at length about the uh educational component now i know i've spoken to captain white and he didn't give me as much um, um uh, as much i should say um um uh, information on the educational component because Captain White had told me that he hadn't been part of something like this before, um, or someone or a ship named after someone that you would you would want to go out and explain who who they were. But um, you know, I really think it's a great opportunity. So when this ship goes into port, and hopefully, you know, at least Secretary Mavis said this will go to a lot of ports where it's still criminal to be LGBTQ, um, and that is, you know. Um, we have we went from 72 to 73 countries when uganda recently passed its um its new uh, uh law in parliament which actually puts anyone who's lgbtq as a as a the criminal punishment is death so they actually increase the criminal punishment of it and we've seen that in some places brunei uh, um 
uh, we have uh, some countries in the Pacific that um, that have on their agenda the harsher criminalization that will include um, the death penalty for someone who simply is LGBTQ. Russia just passed a new propaganda law, so it's punishable for 20 years if you were to simply tell someone that you were lesbian or gay, because now it used to be if that you told anyone under 16. They just passed a new law, which Putin signed into effect, which means that if you tell anyone, it could be seen as propaganda, and that includes other adults. So this is a real good opportunity. I hope that one day this ship goes to um, a lot of these countries. I like to tell the story of one particular young man that we got a, um, uh, an email from. Um, we got many, many emails similar, but this young man, his name is Khalil, we had reached out to him. So after that naming ceremony on Treasure Island, we got an email from this young man, his name is Khalil. Um, he said that he was sitting on the port in Kuwait, um, uh, that he had planned his suicide. So it is illegal to be LGBTQ in Kuwait. Um, it is one of the countries where it is punishable by death. Um, there are honor killings that go on throughout the Middle East currently. An honor killing is when someone comes out to a parent, the parent feels that it, the honorable thing to do is to actually kill their child. Um, and this is quite frequent in a lot of the Middle East. Um, and Kuwait, and in uh, Kuwait, um, uh, you know, the U.S. military is in many ways revered. We are the, the we are the we are the country that freed them from their invasion that Iraq did uh, a few decades ago. And um, uh, and uh, Khalil said in his email, you know, I had planned to kill myself because I didn't want my parents to have to kill me. I wanted to protect them from having to do an honor killing. And so he said, I had planned my suicide, and now I'm sitting here in the port waiting for the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk to arrive because this gives me hope, hope that change can occur, and I have put aside my suicide. Um, plans. And we stayed in contact with Khalil, and he is now actually in a uh, in, in another country in the region that has um, slightly better laws, um, and uh, and he's in a fairly good spot. But he really, you know, it was a beautiful message that he was metaphorically waiting at the port there for the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk to arrive. And I think it's it's a tremendous possibility that one day the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk will either refuel or take on products in in the port in Kuwait and in that region and do some education. Sure. Yep. Now, that actually comes up to a very good point. Your refueling ship, you carry frozen goods, you carry all kinds of goods. How often do you stop in foreign part to upload and to take it out to the ships? Uh, generally, uh, every seven to 10 days. We're on a deployment and we're operational. That's kind of the routine we would be in, uh, kind of like a, a replenishment cycle. We would go out, deliver you know, service, maybe you know three to ten ships, and then have to go back in to load more fuel and load more uh, you know food. Fresh, we move a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables, so that has to be picked up and you know brought you know picked up frequently. So yeah, about every seven to ten days when we're running, yeah. And as as Stuart said, uh, yes. This, a new experience for me. I, I, I told them that supply ships generally uh, labor in obscurity. So, <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, definitely a, a new thing to me that have you know a, all this extra interest in the ship, and I'm looking forward to it actually very much. So, in fact, um, I, I know that the captain said, well, they don't typically get requested for fleet weeks, but I think that he's going to see a lot of requests for <laughs> uh, for a civilian. Sea Lift Command uh, support vessel coming into some major U.S. cities for their Fleet Weeks. Yeah, we we almost always will be will refuel everybody going to Fleet Week and refuel them when they come out of Fleet Week. But we, so that's how that's my experience with Fleet Week. <laughs> I think that's going to change. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you're going to be in them now. Sure. Um, now, how would somebody look up? beyond just a quick internet search for Harvey Milk, how would they search more information on the USNS Harvey Milk? 
because as you said it's not quite out there yet um it we you know military seal of command has an extensive website that that talks about what ships are in the fleet there is a an entry for our ship and then just a general internet search uh, you can find pictures of the ship underway already from our we went out for builders trials in february so i guess no specific place we don't have our own website or anything but, uh yeah, just that, that's how i would i would look at look the, look the ship up and i i do think we we will at the foundation look to establish a um on uh, harveymilk.com a um uh, a series of pages dedicated to uh, to the ship. We do currently, I believe, have a link for the um, christening, christening ceremony, which is still up at the U.S. Navy's um, uh, social media channels, the Secretary's social media channels, and on NASCO's uh, social media channel. So there's that whole um, ceremony is still up there through a number of social media links. Yeah, I believe uh, NHHC still has that on our link as well. Um, gentlemen, is there anything else that you would like to add about Harvey Milk, the Navy, or the ship? Um, I'll go first. I'm sure Stuart has a lot to finish it up. Uh, just a quick one. I, I, uh, it's Harvey Milk served aboard the U.S. Kitty Wake with submarine rescue ship. Uh, I, in the 80s, I actually took a tour of the Kitty Wake. A friend of mine was assigned to it right before it decommissioned. And that, so I've walked the same deck that Harvey Milk did. <laughs> so I'm, I'm always happy to say that. Um, and very much looking forward to getting the ship uh, delivered. Uh, we're expecting, the, expecting that to occur in June of this year. And then uh, the ship will eventually be an East Coast ship based in Norfolk. So we'll have to go through the Panama Canal uh, sometime in the fall. And now we'll get to Norfolk then. So... Looking forward to that. It's a long process to bring a ship into service, uh, and we're well into that. And just re really looking forward to get, get to work and you know, getting the getting the Harvey Milk into all these other ports so people can see it and see what what the, what the ship means. Stuart, did you have anything else that you wanted to add with this? Well, again, it, it, it's just a reinforcement of, um, of of the type of hope that a ship like this can inspire, especially if uh, people know the history of of my uncle um you know he's got a lot of um um living memorials to his name um and this is yet another one an important one um you know uh, military service was very important to him um it was important to um, my paternal side of my family so his father was had been a navy veteran his mother was part of these um even though women couldn't serve she was in a support role at the yeomans um and uh and thank you by the way captain white for always correcting me on my i i, I promote harvey to the kitty hawk because i have problems saying the uh or the kitty wake yeah can you wait yeah so um, <laughs> um my friend on the kitty wake used to get misdirected supplies from the kitty hawk all the time <laughs> Like airplane wheel or leather flight jacket would show up on this little submarine rescue ship. So, <laughs> um, you know, and, and I think it, we're we're quite excited. I know that um, that there are many many members. I did a uh, pride event um, in uh, I think it was 2021 um, at the Pentagon, and I had so many uh, people associated with the Navy who privately came up to me after that um, uh, after that. Um, uh, talk. I, you know, I expected uh, Senator. I was keynoting it with Senator Duckworth, and I expected her to be tackled. But they, you know, so many people came up to me and said, you know, I'm not out yet, even though they could be, even though you know they just didn't feel comfortable being out. But the and the, a lot of these, there were there were commissioned officers coming up to me and say, this is really a big thing. What's happening with the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk? So um, I. Uh, I really look forward to the day of of seeing the ship enter service. Um, Captain White has been um, absolutely terrific and amazing to work with. I've gotten to know um, many of the team leads from NASCO that are building the ship. They are very, very proud. I, I, I was every time I meet them, uh, it's remarkable how much they understand the meaning of this ship and the powerful uh, message that it sends to the world. And so um, 
I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tremendous for, for pride month. It's a tremendous, tremendously prideful event that this ship will enter service this year. <laughs> uh, you know, bar some, some major, uh, um, you know, delay, but, um, uh, and, and that we have in its leadership, it, you know, uh, someone like Captain White, who I think really understands the significance and the import of this to not only the LGBTQ and civil society community in the United States, but the civil society community across the globe. Yep. Well, Captain? No, no, I'm just, okay. Um, I want to say thank you both very much for joining me today and for sharing your thoughts and everything with the National Museum of the United States Navy and for our community.